question for you. What's your next chapter? I'm dead serious. What is the next chapter of your life? I don't care how young you are, how old you are. I want to turn the tables back on you. I want you to think about where you've been. I want you to think about why are you here? There is a new chapter starting in your life, in your business, in your relationships. And it's going to start right now. So what is it? You know, I've been thinking about this a lot because um, I'm in the middle of starting a new chapter. I, I, I've been thinking, I don't know how many of you know me or know my story, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. Um, the last chapter of my life, my, my professional life, started about six years ago. So six years ago, I gave this uh, TED talk, this TEDx talk. And, you know, by the way, this was the first time I had ever given a speech. So this is, if you want to see what it looks like for somebody to have a 21-minute long panic attack, this is a great <laughs> speech to watch. Um, and, you know, what was I talking about? Well, you know, I was asked to come and talk about how I had changed my career so many times, because I had been the kind of person that really could never figure out what the heck I should do with my life. I had gone to law school because I couldn't figure out what to do. I practiced criminal defense for a long time. Then I went into corporate litigation. Then I went into the dot-com scene. Then I got into the entrepreneurial scene. Then I got into the coaching scene. Then I got into the media business, and I was a syndicated talk show host on the radio for a while, and then I worked for CNN, and I never thought I would be a speaker. Never in a million years. So I was giving this talk, and um, it was a talk more about how you change. And at the end, I let a little secret slip. You see, I had discovered something at a terrible time in my life. How many of you know what the five-second rule is? Not the one with the food on the floor. You know, where you drop it? Okay, great. Thank you for raising your hands. If you'll, if you'll just give me a couple minutes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring everybody else into the party that didn't raise their hand. So in 2008, my husband's restaurant business started going under, and it took our house, uh, our entire life savings, and almost our marriage with it. And thankfully, it didn't take the marriage, but it took all the money. And at the time, I was also unemployed, and, and I was facing uh, an issue where I just felt like shit about myself, excuse the word, but I did. Have you ever felt that way? Yeah. The alarm would go off in the morning and all I could think about are all the things that were wrong with my life. You ever wake up and you feel that sense of dread? You got a job you hate going to? You got a body that you don't like? You just don't feel that good? Well, that was me every single morning, and I was also doing a lot, making a lot of decisions that were pretty bad. I was drinking a lot. I was not that nice to my husband. And I was really, really struggling because I was really scared. See, I was doing a lot of things that caused me pain because I was in a lot of pain. Well, what ended up happening is one night I, I, I was uh, watching a, a commercial, and I saw this rocket ship launching, and I thought, oh my God, that's the answer. That's it right there. Tomorrow morning when the alarm goes off, because I was hitting the snooze button over and over and over again. Tomorrow morning when that alarm goes off, I am going to rocket out of that bed like a rocket ship. I am going to move so fast that I cannot talk myself out of getting up. Now, it might have been the four Manhattans I had had that night that gave me that dumb idea. <laughs> um, but, you know, whatever. I I'm going to take the inspiration where it comes. So the next morning, the alarm goes off, and I'll never forget this, you guys. It was a Tuesday. It was February. We had lost the kids' college savings. There was a lien on our house. Chris was sleeping on the couch. I was unemployed. I felt like the world's worst parent. I felt like just no confidence, no idea how I was going to dig myself out of this hole. The alarm goes off, and, and it was weird. It was like time suspended. Immediately, as I laid there in bed, I started thinking. I started thinking about all the things that were wrong. I started thinking about the dread that I felt. I started thinking about, oh, another terrible day. I just don't have the energy for this. And then I did something I had never done before. I could feel the doubt close in as I was lying there thinking. I went five, four, three, two, one. 
And I stood up and I was like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. The next morning, the alarm goes off. I didn't feel like getting up, still had all the same problems. I went five, four, three, two, one. I stood up. Now that I'm almost 50, when the alarm goes off at two, or when the, the body alarm goes off and I have to go to the bathroom, I don't lay there and think about it. Five, four, three, two, one. I get up and go. Lying there, it's very hard to go back to sleep, isn't it? So a funny thing happened. As I started to use this stupid rule, okay? As I started to use this rule, I'm going to count backwards, five, four, three, two, one, if I know I should do something my whole life started to change. You see, what I'm about to prove to you today is that your entire life is happening in five-second windows. That the secret to greater confidence, the secret to beating self-doubt, the secret to building that legacy, to being hungry, like Les was talking about, five-second windows, five-second decisions. I made myself a promise as I started to beat the habit of hitting the snooze button. I said to myself, look, if I find myself in a situation where I know what I should do, but I don't feel like doing it, I'm going to use this stupid rule. So I would five, four, three, two, one, and get up. And I'd walk into the kitchen, and I'd see Chris, and we still had all these financial problems. And I'd go, I want to strangle you, because it's easier to point the finger, isn't it, at other people? Have you ever noticed when you're pointing the finger at other people and blaming and shaming and complaining? There's always three pointing right back at you, isn't there? I think it's the universe or God's way of saying, hey, the power is in you. But when you don't feel confident, you don't feel that the power is in you, do you? You feel full of doubt. So slowly but surely, I started making five-second decisions. I would see the booze, and I knew I shouldn't have it. And I'd go five, four, three, two, one, and I'd turn away. I'd see the phone and knew I needed to make a phone call to get a job, and I'd go five, four, three, two, one, and everything started to change. Now, in full disclosure, I was never going to tell anybody about this, ever, because it sounds so stupid. Oh, you guys want to change your life? No problem. Just count to five. <laughs> Done. Okay, mic drop. I'm out. That's it. Here's the other thing. I had no idea why it worked. I honestly thought like I was a witch. I had figured out a spell. I understood like how to create magic in my head. And here's the other thing. This was classified. This was my stuff. Why would I want you to have it? This was working for me. I suddenly went from depressed, drinking, in bed, in debt, fighting with my husband, to getting up, getting in shape, getting sober for a while. <laughs> getting a job, getting a radio show, making that radio show syndicate, making more money than I ever thought was possible. How? One five-second decision at a time. So I never intended to tell anybody, because it was working for me, it was working for Chris, and then I get and I do this talk and I'm having a panic attack and I totally forget where I am. And at the very end, I'm like, oh, by the way, there's this thing called the five second rule. <laughs> wow. So 2011 was when that chapter of my life started. I walked off that stage, they put that thing online and it's almost 11 million views strong at this point. Yes. Now, the five second rule for those of you that are wondering is this. It's super simple. The moment you begin to hesitate, count five, four, three, two, one. Do not do it out loud. You will scare people. <laughs> You'll sound insane. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, here, I'm ready to go. Don't count up. You can keep going. You're gonna count backwards, five, four, three, two, one, and then you gotta move, and you gotta do this so that your mind doesn't stop you. And in a minute, I'm gonna explain, you, I'm gonna explain some of the science, but I wanna tell you kind of some of the backstory. So, um, you know, a funny thing happened. As that talk started to spread, people from around the world started to write. And we've heard from more than a quarter of a million people in 90 countries. Now, what do you suppose they write about? They write about that stupid five-second rule. But the things that they write about are crazy, profound. So, you know, this gentleman started using it, and he's on pace to double his business in 18 months. More importantly, he's so present with his kids going five, four, three, two, one, and waking up in the moment that he's like dad of the year. We see people using the rule in order to find the courage to reach out to people. We see people using it in a selling situation because you know, thinking about making the call won't make the call happen. Thinking about making sales, funny, that doesn't grow your business, does it? Makes you smart, doesn't make you rich. Easy rule to teach to people. You're gonna become addicted to it because it's so stupid and it works. 
You're gonna be surprised. It works and it's free. It's unbelievable. We know of people around the world that are also quitting terrible habits. And we're gonna talk a little bit about habits today. We also um, see people that are becoming more productive. We know of at least 21 people that have stopped themselves from committing suicide. Because no matter what, I don't care how amazing your life is or how low it gets, your inner wisdom is always with you, always. And the key to getting what you want, and we're gonna talk about the next chapter of your life that starts today, is having the clarity to tune into that wisdom, having the courage to listen to it, and having the confidence to actually take action. Mm -hmm.